Good morning, everyone. So I see lots of um, faces that I know out there, so, but welcome to those who don't know me so well. Our first topic today, then, is going to be talking about LS files and digital information and what you do with it when you do log analysis. And this is a very timely topic because the regulation of submitting logs to the KCC is changing. We're going over to LES files. And this might seem threatening to some, but not really. The whole world is going digital. For example, if I was intending to drive to Chicago next week, I could do what I did 20 years ago. I would go to a gas station and I'd look for a free map. I don't think I'd find a free map. I think it would charge me $3. But today, probably I'd use some kind of GPS gizmo in a car and have a voice tell me how to drive to Chicago. And if I didn't have that, then I would use Google. I'd even use street views if I was unsure where to go. So the notion then of having digital information then is simply matching with the way that we are used to getting information from every other source. So what we'll do is we'll review at least where we are now in terms of where you could get that information and also we'll have a kind of short excursion into one well to see how we'd access the information and how we would analyze it. So first we have to discuss the alternative ways that we can get logging information. And right off here we've got the three major styles then and that is one we have paper, which is what we're used to, the old paper records. In the old days, they literally were blue lines because they were photographically recorded on the trucks. Those are still accessible, we still have them. And then we go into electronic files, which have two basic kinds. One is what would be called raster, and these are simply scanned wireline logs. So pretty much electronic form then of the paper record. The technology involved is the same as what you would see, for example, using a fax machine. For people like me who actually analyze the logs, we prefer what is technically called vector, and these are the LES files that we'll be talking about. And so we have a large number of files already available to us then on our website up at the Kansas Geological Survey. But also down here in Wichita at the Kansas Geological Society, also both paper and raster logs are available. So two primary sources then for accessing information. But we're both moving into the, the digital world. Now for example, if you said, well, I want to access the paper logs I'm used to seeing, then on our website, it would be a matter then of going to the Kansas Wireline Log Header Database and then clicking either by county, if we want to see all the paper logs, or by putting in a well location, in which case then we get access to where that paper record was. And by the same token, you can get the same basic information then from the Kansas Geological Society, only with their big scanned um, database. Now we'll take on one log, or rather one well, and we'll look at different ways that we could get the log information then from that well. So I've selected this one here, the McCoy Baines Trust Well, number 131. And I'm privileged to have the well site geologist who was there. So John Hastings, I could blind him with the laser right here, but I won't. And he'll tell you how he nearly froze to death on this particular well. So indeed, when it was drilled and logged, it was a tight hole. And this is what we would see on the log header. As we look at the logs, here we are down then in the lower Morrow Sandstone, the Keys, and we'll be looking at this section right here. A nice development of Morrow, the shale above, shale below, and here we're looking then at the porosity logs. We have the, both the neutron and the density, so here's the density as a solid curve, here's the neutron as a dashed curve. Good porosity development towards the top, and we're seeing a combination then of both a sandstone effect, because these are on limestone units, and also a gas effect as well. So just by looking at the logs, we can see a lot of information. And that's what you would continue to do as you analyze logs. As Yogi Bear once said, it's amazing what you can see just by looking. The whole point of these logging curves is to give the information up front, and then if you want to actually get some numbers to go with it, then that's when you dig a little deeper. And here are the matching resistivity logs then for that section. We see a shallow guard log there, and then we see the medium and the deep logs, 
and we can see then in this section what clearly looks to be indication of hydrocarbons as we climb up the section, particularly when the resistivity is on a log scale. Now when it comes to cancers electronic logs, I call them, again, we either have raster, the scanned wireline logs, or we have vector where we actually have it in digits. And the LAS digital standard is the newer one. Back in the bad old days, we'd have LIS, DLS, and various other logging company formats, which are typically written in binary and just murder to actually read for somebody who wasn't specialized in their formats. Now, on the one hand, we can get a scan. And so now, instead of seeing the paper copy of this well, we're seeing what it would look like then of the header coming directly off the scan. So this is a, an aspect then of the digital revolution, whatever you like to call it, simply having access to data. Rather than contacting somebody and say, I need to have a paper log, please send me a photocopy or whatever, you could see it directly then on your terminal and simply by pressing print screen, you could print it off or what have you. Some of the scans are <coughs> around, <coughs> excuse me, rather large, they're TIFF files, and so there is software available to you that's free, otherwise I wouldn't be pointing to it. Blueview, for example, from Schlumberger, that is what you can download from the Schlumberger website, is free, and it'll allow you then to read pretty much any conventional scanned log. So that way then we can actually look at it directly on the screen. And here we are, simply looking at the scan of what we looked at before, which is simply a photocopy made of the paper log. But again, that gives you access immediately to the information you want, but we're still in kind of analog form. Now this is the way it used to be, and that is that if you were getting digital information, in this case from Schlumberger, rather than have it delivered to you from the truck, it will be delivered to you from one of the local Schlumberger centers. So this is a customer tape and this will be recorded in binary, and so you had to have specialized software to read it. And Schlumberger was very helpful in providing you documentation how to do it, but it was a very slow process. The other aspect, too, about the storage was these magnetic tapes. And way back when, when they were making these magnetic tapes, I would have a nightmare. I'd wake up at 3 in the morning and start screaming because in my nightmare, I dreamed that the state regulation would insist that we had everything stored to us in digital form. Now, the real problem with these tapes, it wasn't the fact that it was a magnetic storage medium, it was simply that you could lose the information simply by stretch of the tape. Back then it was estimated that a classic tape of this kind might have a lifetime of about three years before it finally gets stretched out and was unreadable. So it was kind of bad news that we had the information we wanted, it was so difficult to get at. Then life moved on in all sorts of ways. And that is, instead of having a tape that you mount on a tape drive of a big mainframe computer somewhere, we were now working with laptops or at least small machines. And also the way then that the information was stored was on a floppy disk. So you can see the slides I'm showing you that I have the John Doveton Museum of Petrophysics because things go out of date so quickly. And we're looking at a floppy disk. Well, it's kind of hard now to find a laptop that will accept a floppy disk. It's by some company called Amico, which has now been gobbled up by BP. But we're moving forward in the sense that as we look at it, it says .las. And so this is a format that's very easy to read, as we'll, we'll find out. 